Hey everyone, another week went by. You know, is it just me or time just flies by these days? Every week I finish putting a video together and I tell myself, okay, next week I will be better. I will start early and not sit all Saturday night panicking to finish. Well, guess what? It's Saturday night. Nothing changed. It's like being back in college again and telling myself I will start early on those research papers and then I did them last minute anyway. Eh, I guess some things will never change. But this week I am really excited. As you see, I took a drive out to Westchester County, about 55 miles, to show you a small portion of the New York City's water supply from the Croton Lake, which is an aqueduct system that runs a little bit over 40 miles into New York City. We will begin our journey by the old Croton Dam, and then I will show you the new Croton Dam. But as you see here, the water ran down mostly through gravity via a aqueduct system all the way down to New York City from the lake. It crossed over the high bridge, which you saw in my video from last week. That is really where I got my inspiration for this video. And then it traveled to the receiving reservoir, which is today Central Park, although the park did not exist yet. As you see in this image, it was this kind of a rectangular reservoir, and then starting in 1858, an additional reservoir was built, which you see in the background. The smaller one was filled in in the 1930s, and today is roughly the location of the Great Lawn in Central Park, while the other reservoir is now the Jacqueline Kennedy Reservoir. Finally, the water flowed into a distributing reservoir, which stood where today is the New York Public Library on 5th Avenue and Bryan Park. And so let us begin here on the Gatehouse Bridge, which is really a beautiful place to walk because you have these great views all around you. Just be careful because cars do drive on the bridge itself. And sometimes it gives you a little bit of an adrenaline rush as you basically see everything that is below you. So if you begin looking down and just focusing on your feet, it does give you a bit of an uncomfortable feeling, but hey, why would you? Look at the views all around you. It's gorgeous. So the first settlers in New York City got their water from ponds, streams, wells. One of the main locations for drinking water was a place called Collect Pond located by what today is Brooklyn Bridge and behind City Hall. As you see here, it was also a place where some of the early steamboats were tested. But by then, 1800s, the water was pretty much polluted. So much so that people were getting sick, like with cholera, which is basically a bacterial disease many times associated with drinking dirty water. In 1799, the Manhattan Company was established to help with better water supply. However, uh, well, how do I put this nicely? They kind of sucked at water delivery. Basically, the company was headed by Aaron Burr, who shortly afterwards became the vice president of the United States. And oh, what an interesting story about this vice president but I will not reveal it just yet. As soon I am planning to do a video about Alexander Hamilton, and so you will get that juicy details in that video. But the company was not really interested in creating a better water supply network, as much as entering the banking industry, as they basically opened their bank. And so over time, the company merged with other companies, eventually like JP Morgan, and today it is the JP Morgan Chase Bank. But anyway, clean water remained a huge problem for the city, not just to drink, but also to fight fires. Like for example, the Great Fire of 1835, which burned down about 17 city blocks. So a good supply of water was desperately needed for the growing city. So work finally began on the old Croton aqueduct system and the dam was here. Well, and still is. 
we still see a little bit right there between the trees on the side. The old dam is today submerged beneath the reservoir. It was submerged in 1906 once the new dam opened. Here it's a little bit visible from the side road, but I would not suggest for anyone to try to get closer because check this out, the whole side of the road collapsed. I don't know the story, but things like this happen especially after strong storms pass by. Therefore, you always have to be aware of your surroundings, especially walking on the edges of hills or mountains. You don't want to be careless and accidentally slip and fall. But those of you who are looking for a weekend getaway, it is just such a beautiful and peaceful place to walk, especially in the fall with the leaves turning different colors. But also the walk across the bridge is really enjoyable. The bridge itself was completed in 1904, I believe, so 120 year old bridge. And I love the small details in some places like you see here, the initials NCA, which I'm guessing stand for the new Croton Aqueduct. The old dam was designed by people like John Bloomfield Jervis, who was born on Long Island and was one of the leading civil engineers in America at that time. He was also responsible for the design of the Dewitt Clinton steam locomotive in 1831, one of the earliest in the country. However, by late 1800s, the water supply was not enough for the growing city, and so a new dam had to be built. And so let us go there now, which is about five miles away, in the Croton Gorge Park. And right when you walk out from the parking lot, you see this beauty right in front of you. Again, if you are from New York or like neighboring states, this is really a great place to visit for a day trip. But this is the new Croton Dam, which was built from 1892 until 1906, so it took about 14 years to finish this project. Which, by the way, when it opened was the largest dam in the world. There were some delays along the way, like for example in the year 1900, there was a strike over long hours and poor wages, as generally the workers worked for 10 hours a day, Eventually, I think because of the strike and everything else, by 1902, if I'm not mistaken, the hours were reduced to 8. But the one thing that really overwhelms you right away is the size of this. The dam is about 300 feet high and has a length of about 2,100 feet. On the side, we have the spillway, which is where extra water flows in case of a reservoir being full. But if you do not have time to go to, let's say, Niagara Falls in New York and you want to stay local and yet experience the power of water, you can always come here, especially after heavy rains. This place is awesome. So New York City still uses this system today, although most of the water today comes from the Catskills, Delaware region further up north, about 90% of the water or so. But still, about 10% comes from this system as well. The water is filtered in the Bronx in a filtration plant, and so it is still used till this day. But not only can we view the dam from below, you can walk on top of it as well. So let's get up there onto that bridge over the spillway and then on the dam itself, so you can see some of the views from the top. However, when I was leaving, three people came to look at the dam, so from this perspective, you can just see how massive this is by comparison to those people.
So there are some trails here. If you go left of the dam to where you drive in with the car, walk all the way to the entrance to the park and then take a sharp turn to the right. As you see, there is a footpath that leads to the top. And you can go on a little like a hiking trail, which is always fun. And this one is really not that bad. Even if you are not into hiking, this trail is really not that long. So trust me, you won't hate it. But you do get to see the dam and the bridge from the side. Especially if you go in the winter, when there is no leaves on the trees, you get a really nice view from the side. And onto the bridge we go. Now, seeing everything from the top is just as great. And then from the other side, you see the reservoir. Looking at everything, even from this perspective, you realize how magnificent this project was and how massive in scale it is. Down there is the bridge that I just stood on and we were looking up. And here we are on the top of the dam, which is a really fun experience because from one side you have this massive drop. You really see and feel the height. Whereas from the other side, well, you're right next to the lake. So it's like really interesting experience to see the difference of the views and height perceptions. It's a, again, it's kind of an enjoyable walk to be honest with you. And we can take a trail going down from the other side. So if you want to, you can sort of take like a loop around the dam. And if you want to come here on a bike or let's say you have pets or kids, I would recommend going to the dam from this side. So when you are at the bottom, when you're looking at the dam, basically go to the right. And at the end of the parking lot, there will be like a playground. And there is where the trail will take you to go all the way up. As you see here, you can go down directly to the parking lot or you can take a walk on the old Croton Aqueduct Trail. It runs for about 26 miles and you can walk on it all the way to the Bronx, passing many interesting places along the way as you are walking above the old tunnel that at one point was so vital to the city and its people. So you can walk further down the trail as much as you would like and have the time for, or if you just want like a 10 minute walk, you can stay on this trail and then there's going to be like a path to your right, which you can take and it's going to lead you back into the parking lot. So that's exactly what I did. You know, I love these walks, coffee in one hand, of course, some sort of a snack in the other one, and just take a stroll on some of these trails like this time of the year, breathing in the fresh air. Honestly, for me, it's something that really re-energizes me. But you know what? Instead of walking on these trails, I figured, you know what? Since I'm already here in Westchester, so far away from home, let me show you one more place, one more location. So I got in my car and I drove about 10 miles to the Lesden Park, Arboretum and Veterans Memorial. So those of you who would really like to make like a whole day trip out of this, you can consider stopping in this location as well. You have gorgeous formal gardens, fountains, woodlands. It's really a nice place to take a walk and relax. 
And there is also something for the kids which I will show you towards the end. The property was bought in 1940 by William and Mildred Lasdam, and you see their busts right here as you enter the garden. And when they passed away, the place was sold to Westchester County. There is a small veterans museum on the property, but as you see, they were unfortunately closed on that day. And there is, right next to it, a beautiful main building, which was built in 1933, which is a colonial style building, which is modeled on the house of George Washington in Virginia. That is something I didn't know and I learned that day, so that is one of the benefits of me putting these videos together, is that sometimes I learn things, like this one for example. But you know what? It really does resemble Washington's house. Here is a photo of the residence of George Washington in Virginia, the first president of the United States, and here is this house. You can definitely see the similarities, especially from this side of the house. And like I said, for the kids, there are some fun trails, like, ooh, a new dino trail. Let's see. But you know what? Before we go on the dino trail, the ferry trail is on the way. So essentially, you have these small little homes for ferries along the way. But you know what? For kids, this is fun. As they're walking through the woods, they can look for some of these homes, which are sometimes in plain view, and sometimes you gotta actually look for them. And the Dino Trail, which is, well, some dinosaurs. So you know what? Even if you are an adult but have some spare time, honestly, it's kind of fun. But my dear friends, I logged in yesterday and I saw that now I have over a thousand subscribers and that is just wild to me. It has been 11 months of putting these videos together and I never thought that this would pick up the way it did. So thank you all so much for your support, your views. It's really an unbelievable journey to be honest with you. And like I mentioned before, next year I will try to make some more personal videos where you will finally get to see me and who I am and not just the locations themselves. But again, in order to do that I'm gonna need a little bit more time to dedicate to this channel and the next two, three months, my schedule is just, honestly, pure chaos. So I will do that, but next year. But the point is, thank you all so much. And like always, I hope you enjoyed this video as well. And I will see you soon in some other mysterious place here in New York. Bye, everyone.